Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 9th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got another spring framework update from Pivotal and given the issues that we had with exploits against similar vulnerabilities in the past, it's probably something to pay attention to. Three vulnerabilities were addressed in this update. The most serious one is CVE 2018-1270. This vulnerability is exposed via WebSockets if you're using Stomp. Stomp is short for Streaming Text Oriented Message Protocol, which is one way how you can exchange messages over WebSockets that's supported by Spring. Now, if you're using this and you're also authenticating and authorizing the messages using Spring Security, then only authenticated users can take advantage of this flaw. So it doesn't sound quite as dangerous and as common as some of the other spring flaws that we had in the past, but certainly, you know, get on patching. There have been a lot of problems in the past really identifying applications that use Spring and then having them patched. Well, and talking about how important it is to patch these vulnerabilities quickly, uh, Cisco vulnerability, CVE 2018-171, this was the smart install vulnerability that uh, was just patched about a week ago is already being exploited. In this particular case, it made the news because it was used in attacks against Iranian and Russian networks. These attackers didn't try to hide. They were hacktivists that tried to retaliate against Iran and Russia. Now, given that hacktivists are not trying to hide, it's pretty obvious that you will see other groups that are more stealthy using these same exploits. Up to now, it appears that over 200,000 routers have already been exploited using this particular vulnerability. And in the last few years, uh, these fairly minimized computers and uh, compute sticks have become quite popular. Intel does sell a series of them under the brand name Nook, the new unit of computing. Now, since these computers are fairly small and not too expensive, users tend to have sort of sets of them that they are using and connecting traditional physical keyboards to them can be quite cumbersome. Well, uh, Intel had a virtual keyboard in order to support users that would not like to connect a physical keyboard. This virtual keyboard was an iOS and Android app. Sadly, it did not properly authenticate keystrokes being sent to the device, allowing attackers to inject their own keystrokes. Instead of a patching, Intel has now discontinued this particular product. Probably fixing this problem would have required changes to the hardware or at least the firmware on these Nook devices. So Intel went ahead and just is no longer supporting this product and recommends that you uninstall it. And Bing apparently has been displaying links to malicious software if you searched for Google Chrome downloads. Now, we have seen sort of this uh, Black Hat search engine optimization or just the outright purchase of ads in search engines before. Google has had a history of this, uh, but has gotten pretty good in cleaning up uh, after various attackers taking advantage of popular keywords. One problem uh, with Google as well as here with Bing has been that when you purchase an ad on search engines, the URL being displayed to the user is actually adjustable by the advertiser. So in this case, it looks like you're going to a legitimate Google Chrome download URL, but you're actually redirected to something else. Now, I just gave it a quick try before I recorded the, this podcast. Haven't uh, really seen any issues with Bing right now. But of course, this is of the old whack the mole game. These attacks, they start popping up from time to time whenever they find a new workaround to whatever block the search engine put in place.
Well, and just to show how difficult it can sometimes be to come up with good patches, the Unix utility Beep I mentioned last week, which had a privilege escalation vulnerability, is apparently still vulnerable. Now on patch systems, you no longer have the full approach escalation vulnerability, but you're still able to detect if a file does exist or does not exist, even if you don't have any access to the file. Now, Beep is usually not installed by default, so it shouldn't really be a huge issue. And given its limited utility these days, you probably just want to uninstall it. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And if you have a minute, I'll also put a link to this year's podcast awards. So I would appreciate your vote. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.